pleasure to introduce Chris Brown and tell us about deformation of colonial categories and the song brackets. Ready? Um, yeah. Thank you for the invitation. So, this is going to be about the stuff in the title is joint work in progress with Nick Rosenblum. Uh, but this is going to use uh, joint work with Toby Dickerhove. And I'm going to start by describing this. So the setting is the following. I'm going to start with C, some small DD category. Triangulated, item code and complete, and so on. For the applications, so some of the definitions make sense, but for the applications, I'm going to do this over a ground field of characteristic zero. And I'm interested in the so-called moduli of objects. In the sense of Toen Vakier. So I'm going to recall what this is. So this is an object of derived algebraic geometry. So I should say quickly the setting in which I treat derived algebraic geometry. So the most general objects are, well, I'm going to work with some kind of commutative algebras, which are going to be dual to my affine objects. So these are going to be commutative differential graded algebras bounded above at zero. So such a thing looks like a zero, a minus one, and so on. So think, for instance, the Kazool complex on some functions. And the most general objects that one considers are some kind of pre-stacks here, which are just uh, the category of, well, infinity functors from these CDGAs to some category, infinity category of spaces. So every object you look at is something in here, maybe with some extra properties, maybe descent, maybe an atlas, and so on. And for each such, for a pre-stack, uh, there's a very tautological way to define what is a perfect complex on here. So I'm going to define a category of perfect complexes. This is going to be a small DG category. You pull back perfect complexes, so I'm going to get the target being in opposite of small DG categories. And I know where my affines are going to go. These are just going to go to perfect modules over the functions. And I'm just going to force this. It's going to be a con extension. I'm just going to force it to uh, commute with co-limits. So a general pre-stack is tautologically a co-limit over affines mapping in. <coughs> and so I'm just going to define perf x be the limit now over opposite of that finds mapping in. And it turns out that this functor has a right adjoint. There's a universal way to make a small DG category into a pre-stack. And since it's going to be a right adjoint, we can just compute what its value is. So if I have a sm small DG category C, I can compute its values on some affine, some CDGA. So let me write that as u. So that's going to be maps of pre stacks from u into this moduli space. And since this is a right adjoint, this is going to be maps and small dg cap. So remember, there was an op here. So if I want to get rid of the op, the order is going to have to change. So it's just going to be functors from the small dg category C to perfect complexes on U. And then taking U equals MC itself, we get a universal such functor. 
from C to perfect complexes on this one device space. Such that if I had any other functor like this, that's the same as a point, a U point in MC, it's given by pullback. So this is the universal such thing. This is some other one, which gives a map from U to MC, and I just pull back along there. So the reason this is called moduli of objects is that if C is smooth and proper, uh, all functors like this are relatively representable. So I could tensor this up over U, and it would be represented on something on the tensor product. More generally, you could just take C smooth, and then uh, you're looking at somehow objects in C with compact support and some compactness condition as objects of the category. So it turns out this moduli space is uh, well adapted to setting certain invariants of C. Um, so let me give you a construction. So let's suppose I'm given, right, so applying um, functional chains. taking S1 invariants I get uh, a map from negative cyclic chains of C so that's where I took the S1 invariants on actual chains to negative cyclic chains of this category um, this moduli space is big not quasi compact so this is not the same as taking negative cyclic chains locally on MC, but it maps to such a thing. So I could take the limit, again, over affines mapping in of HC minus U. And now, here, I'm on a commutative object. So there's an extra grading on negative cyclic chains having to do with Adam's operations. So there's, that's a fact about symmetric monoidal categories. So there's a projection to weight P, and we may get limit over HC minus of U of weight P. And this, by the HKR theorem, this identifies with the limit over uh, piece of the Hodge filtration under Ronco homology of U, the Ronco chains, with some shift by 2p. So if you work out what the shift is, that's how it works out. So this is via. Uh, here you can see the smooth? Um, no. But the, um, so the drum may be in uh, crystalline? Yeah. Uh, I understand it in terms of derived Ronco cohomology. So I use the cotangent complex to, okay. to write it, and it's the filtration that comes from the cotangent complex, not from the lane. Yeah. So this is. It's still funny. It's still the funny fact, yeah. Um, no. That's right. So it, it turns out I'm going to put finiteness, finiteness hypotheses on C. And so I can, I can restrict the, this limit yeah, to, to some yeah. finite type things. So this is derived wrong. With uh, filtration uh, coming from cotangent complex, which in general differs from the filtration coming from Delene. So just P, project P, P, P is a weight. Weight, ah. Okay. Here it's a weight, here it's ah, a piece okay. of the Hodge filtration. Mm -hmm. So this complex starts with differential P forms to differential P plus one forms and so on. Okay. Uh, right, so it turns out that these are the complexes that you use in order to talk about closed differential forms on a pre-stock. So 
from here what we'll get is that given a negative cyclic chain, let's call it alpha, to my category, uh, I'm going to get for each p some component in here, alpha p in here. Associated grade piece, or you no, no, filter, filter, filter piece. So let me write it out. So FP, <laughs> for simplicity, suppose, uh, I guess it doesn't matter. So, so U is some derived affine. Maybe a finite type. Uh, then concretely, FP of the derived round cohomology just looks like um, which p of cotangent sitting in degree p, Durand differential, which p plus one cotangent, and so on. So it's just, what do you call it, stupid or brutal? Stupid. In English it's stupid. In English it's brutal? Stupid. If, if x is an, if you take an algebraic variety and you look at one of the vector models, you basically get stupid Uh I'm not going to. There's some story. You get something more like Donaldson Thomas invariance in the Calabi-Yau 3 setting out of this story, but I'm not going to go with that. I'm actually, what I'm going to try to do is give you some nice generalization of the story about the Goldman bracket. This is what I'm eventually going. So anyway, this is a way, so far it's very formal. It's a way to take some invariance of a category, some negative cyclic chains, and produce closed differential forms. So out of this we got, so alpha p gives a closed differential form, almost by definition a closed differential form in this setting. So locally, I'm giving you a cochain here, maybe with some shift. So it's a p-form. Uh, and requiring it to be a cochain, it's going to make it Durham closed up to coherent homotopy. So alpha p gives a closed differential form, differential p-form of uh, degree. If you work out how the degrees work, it's going to be p plus i. Okay. Can I reiterate, uh, just yeah. uh, rephrase my question? Uh, at some point there, you kind of uh, did a little step where the perf disappeared in the first line of the other board. Yeah. Right? So is that some kind of thing where we're sort of slashing with the term class of the universal bundle? No, kind of thing? no, no. This is all this is is um, for each u mapping into M C. I could pull back perfect complexes here and take the limit over all such maps. And that gives a map in HC minus just by functoriality. So far, there's no Charon character of anything. The point is that this moduli, so if this moduli space were quasi compact, this would be an isomorphism. But I'm working with some big moduli space, and so there's just a map from here to here, just given by pullback. No, you're still saying that cohomology of perfect complexes is equal to cohomology of the U itself. I'm saying that there's a map. That's all I'm saying. It doesn't have to be an isomorphism. I'm saying the map I want, I'm just saying that the map I want is going to factor through this, but actually, I'm only mapping to this part, which is more locally defined. But doesn't that eventually end up saying basically the thing that they do, the U for Donaldson invariance, when you unwind that whole thing? No, I think it's a way to produce kind of topological classes from uh, on, on all moduli spaces at once. Yeah, that's it. Which you want later to integrate if you do it in some series. 
Yeah, so I'm not exactly going to integrate something, but... Yeah, okay, okay. okay, so there's a story yeah, I can do. No cycles to no integrate. Yeah, we there's, no cycles, to, there's no cycles to integrate. I can do lots of things with this. I'll point them out as I go along. The one thing I want to do with it right now is um, I want to consider a very special kind of HC minus class, namely a Calabial structure. So this is some very general construction. So, right, so special cases. Let me just mention one other special case that I'm not going to use, which I think is interesting for some other applications. So special case is that i equals zero. Uh, then I get a p form of degree p for all p. A p form of degree p, closed p form. A degree p for all p coming for instance, from suppose this alpha was the chain character of an object in my category. So those will get integral classes. Okay, so those are interesting, but I'm not going to use them. So this, what I do want to use is the following. So something that's not a chain character, it's more like a volume form on my category. So now, let C be smooth. All right, so that means diagonal by module is perfect. This didn't quite, the diagonal by module appeared, but this condition of smoothness, I think, didn't appear in Sasha's talk. So then, definition, uh, then, um, so right id, so the identity functor for the diagonal bimodule, and id bang for its bimodule dual, then you can check that since it's smooth, Hochschild chains by the way, everything's at the chain level in this talk. Okay, so this, this means chains. Um, this can be identified with HOM of bimodules or endofunctors from id bang to id. What does bimodule mean? Pardon? Bimodule mean? So concretely, uh, if C, if the big category associated to C was modules over some DG algebra, then in this case, it bang would be um, a HOM complex from the bimodule R to RE. R op tensor R. Yeah, I understand. But do you have some general? I could write it down in terms of some adjunction. Uh, no, but for, for G category, it's the same definition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I, 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 there's a better way to write it, and but I don't need it right now. So I ask you to just think of this example if you don't already know the definition. Okay. Which one do I want? I think I'll leave this. But you won't be able to see it. Oh, no, no, there's tools. No, tools. Ah, it's just a hook here. You can. You are cool enough. I'll use the third board at toward the end. You can turn it to the left shoulder. Yeah, I never know what to do with the the board at the very back. How to use it efficiently? Okay. So I have a smooth category, and then definition. I suppose this definition is due to Maxime. Maybe Ginsburg. So, so C, a smooth uh, category, uh, a Calabiao structure, or it's a kind of non commutative volume form. On C, uh, 
of dimension D is, so this is a class, uh, a negative cyclic chain. I'm going to call it theta. So from H C minus minus D, uh, such that, so that is playing the role of a closed differential form of some degree. And then for it to be a volume form, it should have some non-vanishing property. So there's a natural map always to HH, which is just forget the fact that something was circle invariant. And remember, since C is smooth, I can interpret this as some morphisms of bimodules. So such that under this map, maybe I should give this a name somehow, theta underline, such that theta underline as a map from id bang to id is an equivalence. So this is where, this is like trivializing the canonical bundle, yeah. or inverse canonical bundle actually, but let's not worry about it. I think it's where we just stop the basic law. In, in principle, if it's, you don't assume it's smooth, you still get a map from Hochschild homology to comp space, mm -hmm. and then you can ask more generally, forgetting smoothness whether this will be isomorphism and will be some other examples here. Okay. Um, so there is some story, this is what I'm calling a Clavial structure. Is this related to the pre Clavial structure? No, 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 it's, it's no, so no, it's 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 introduction. No, no, when you get no you get home still get home, uh, map from Hochschild homology to homes from a mm -hmm. int check you defined formally to it. No, but for pre have come from it to it. Ah, yes, yes, yeah, that's yeah, it's in the other direction. Is so there is, uh, there is... Like differential forms. Yeah, it's a different story, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have a different story, yeah. No, so so the, the story about pre structures is an extension of what I'm going to talk about today. So Nick and I have, have been talking about this, but I, I don't think I'll get all the way there. So right now I'm really doing the strictly Calabial setter. Okay, so this is the definition. And then um, from, uh, so here's the theorem. I told you how to construct closed differential forms out of negative cyclic classes. Here's a special class of negative cyclic classes. What do we get? So this is the, the theorem with Toby, uh, which will appear on the archive this summer. It's written, it just needs to be proofread. Um, so the theorem is that uh, given this pair C theta, uh, uh, a smooth Clavial category of dimension D, the closed two form that I extract the closed two form of degree two minus D theta two. So for each P I could get a closed P form. Here I take the two form is non-degenerate. So uh, the moduli space together with this two form is uh, shifted symplectic. So people say two minus D shifted symplectic. So this notion of shifted symplectic geometry goes back to the Q manifold literature in math physics and has been developed by uh, Bertrand. Uh, <laughs> so this is a, a non-commutative, this theorem is a kind of non-commutative AKS set construction. So I'm, I'm not going to, there's a way in which you can read this construction of differential forms that I wrote as a kind of non-commutative AKS set. Okay. Uh, Non-degenerate, so this is shifted symplectic in particular.
the complex of functions on this moduli space shifted by 2 minus d is uh, a DG Lie algebra with respect to the Poisson bracket, which has a degree because the symplectic form has a degree. So this is the background. And now I want to pose a problem. So the problem uh, is construct Hamiltonians on this moduli space. and compute Poisson brackets. So at the end, I hope to have the time to do review the example of the Goldman bracket. This will be a generalization of that, where I take the category C to be local systems on some compact oriented surface. You can also get kitchen example in type A. Ah, so the model will be finite dimensional modules. Yeah, Not that's right. The modules. That's right. So the condition that this functor out of C uh, produce always a perfect complex will force the local system to be finite rank. Uh, right. So constructing functions in the moduli space is actually easy. It's just the variation on how we constructed differential forms. So. Um, from the universal functor from C to perfect complexes on the moduli space, we get uh, a map. Uh, we get for each map of an affine M to MC. Mm. Uh, a map, an S1 map, from Hochschel chains of my category C to Hochschel chains on my affine U. And here, I can project to the functions on U. So that remains an S1 map. So I should write gamma, probably. But it's F and it doesn't matter much. So this is an S1 map, and this is compatible in maps between, say, U and V. Natural. U is a map. U is an affine scheme mapping to MC. That data is equivalent to a functor from C to perf U. And so this is just given by the map from C to perf U. So this is natural in U. Okay. Thus, we get, uh, thus taking the limit we get um, a map, an S1 map. from Huxle chains on my category to the limit over all affines mapping to my moduli space. And by definition, that's nothing but the complex of functions on the moduli space. However, this has the trivial S1 action here. So this factors through the co-invariants, which by definition are the cyclic chains. Okay. So uh, let me quickly say in an example of C is modules uh, so it's a problem between big and small categories. If this is modules over some, say DGA may concentrate in degree zero, you can do more generally, so R 
before. Done. In degree zero, the cyclic homology is just R modulo commutators, and this map here is just trace of action. So given a finite dimensional module for R and an element of R, I let it act on that finite dimensional module. It's a point in this moduli space. And the value of the function at that point is just the trace. So this is a way to construct lots of functions on these moduli spaces. And now the interesting part is to compute their Poisson brackets. So I can state the theorem and then spend some time explaining the idea behind the proof. So this is with Nick Rosenblum. So the setting is uh, C theta, a smooth Claudial category of dimension D. Uh, then, then there is uh, a natural string bracket. on the shifted cyclic chains. So the shift is the same as the shift that appears for the shift of Poisson structure on the moduli space of objects, so 2 minus d. This is also the same as the shift that appears in the chas sullivan lie algebra on equivariant homology of a free loop space. But also for higher products and things, that yeah. two, two, 2 minus <laughs> silly remark here. So there's going to be, uh, we're going to get this via deformation theory rather than some topology. So a natural string bracket on here, um, uh, such that the map, the shift of the map I just constructed for functions The infinity. Uh, yeah, I mean. It will be a great possible, great decent hybrid or whatever. Stuff. I, I, we don't write down a formula. Yeah. We write down a deformation okay. problem, yeah. and and show that the underlying tangent Lie algebra, the complex is this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because we're never going to be able to write down formulas on the moduli space itself, yeah. and so we need an intrinsic characterization of this so that obviously yeah. so one thing acts on the other. So I have this map to functions now with a shift. So this is a map of Lie algebras. So this intertwines the brackets. And this left hand side will map to deformations so is These are kind of Hamiltonian deformations. Yeah, and left hand side will be abstract deformation of this. Of this Calabial pair yeah. with an extra condition, which yeah. I'm going to, yeah, it's I'm going to explain. Now. Different, yeah. I'm going to explain what it is. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is a sticky version of what I consider for non, non Hitchin system, for non yeah, 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 yeah. That's an example, at least in type A. Yeah. I mean, I'm doing linear. Yeah, things, on, so on the type, type not A. Not for yeah. a general group. Yeah. On the type A. Uh, That's right. So, so yeah. Sasha's story about the non commutative Hitchin system is, um, fits into this nicely. So the proof of this is going to be exactly figuring out what kind of deformation problem 
is such that the complex underlying its DGLA is this thing. So in fact, there are different kinds of deformations you can study. And one of them gives some shift of HC minus, one of them gives this shift of HC. And the construction of this one goes via the first one uh, for HC minus. So um, we're going to get, we get the theorem uh, by studying deformations of the pair. Uh, so actually, I find it more intuitive to think about the infinitesimal automorphisms rather than deformations. Of this pair, C theta. Okay. So first, we're going to start with infinitesimal automorphisms of the category. Okay, so first, so I'm just reviewing what is known. Um, there's a formal group. Of infinitesimal automorphisms of my category. So this goes from DG Artin algebras, the spaces, and it takes a DG Artin algebra A, so I have to tell you what the A points of my group are. Uh, so I'm going to write down something a little bit heuristic. You can make it precise. You can find this in Louis Dag 10. So it's the space of um, automorphisms of C tensored up to A over A plus uh, a trivialization of this automorphism on the central fiber. So I restrict to the central fiber and I have to provide the trivialization of that automorphism. So it's the space of such data. So then the Lie algebra of this infinitesimal automorphism group turns out to be Hochschild cochains with the Gerson Hubbard bracket. So I have to shift by one to make the Gerson Hubbard bracket of degree zero. So that's a well-known story. Um, it's been known at various levels of precision for a long time. Uh, if you haven't read the treatment in DAG-10, I highly recommend it. So there's some technical problem about this not being exactly uh, satisfying sort of Schlesinger's conditions, but you can fix that in a very nice way. And then two. There's always the, it so if I fine. loop deformations, I get automorphisms. Mm -hmm. And then I can take the classifying space of automorphisms and get back the deformations. So why, there's this funny story, right, that if I take a deformation functor, then its tangent complex shifted by minus one is a Lie algebra. Not its tangent complex, but its tangent complex shifted by minus one. That minus one is exactly taking loops of the deformation functor to get the automorphisms. So Lie algebra should be Lie algebras of groups. This is the group. So two, um, these infinitesimal automorphisms, these act naturally on anything functorially defined out of the category. These act on uh, all functorial invariants. The category, uh, in particular, they act on HC minus and on shifts of HC minus. So the shift we care about is minus D because that's where our volume form lives. 
And this action is via the non-commutative lead derivative. Okay. So uh, at the level of sort of, sorry, at the level of Lie algebras. If I differentiate this action. In fact, that's how you get the usual Lie derivative in differential geometry, right? A vector field is an infinitesimal automorphism and acts via the lead derivative on forms. So then um, we form the derived stabilizer group. So it's not just naive stabilizers, I provide the data of stabilization or stabilizing. So I'm going to call this infinitesimal automorphisms C theta. So it's going to be an extension of infinitesimal automorphisms with extra data stabilizing theta. So what is this? Its values on an Artinian algebra is the space of automorphisms of C tensor A together with a trivialization on the central fiber and a uh, I can take the constant family of volume forms on my trivial family here I can pull it back and I need to provide a trivialization a stabilization of it okay, so that's extra data I'm not going to give it a name so it's three pieces of data an automorphism uh, a trivialization on the central fiber and a stabilization of my volume form. So I get some short exact sequence of formal groups. sequence, so I have these infinitesimal automorphisms stabilizing my volume form. I can forget the fact that they stabilize my volume form. I just get an infinitesimal automorphism. There's some fiber. Okay. And at the level of Lie algebras, uh, I claim this becomes well, here, uh, actually, I'm, if I may, I want to write it vertically. Okay, so rotate around. So I'm going to write the Lie algebra here. Uh, no, I'll write it horizontally. Fine. So, so here, the Lie algebra I know is Huxel cochains with the shift. The diff, uh, the derivative of the action on negative cyclic chains is the Lie derivative, as I said. I have the Lie algebra I'm trying to understand, which is these infinitesimal automorphisms stabilizing. Call it H. This is some fiber F. But I have some additional uh, things that I know. So I can contract against my volume form. And by the non-degeneracy of the Clavier form, this is going to identify with Hochschild chain shifted by 1 minus d. Then I can apply the B operator, so the non-commutative Durham differential just contraction of a vector yeah, field yeah. against a form yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay and I claim this square commutes by Cartan's magic formula so 
here I'm using this non-commutative calculus. And I'm really using the fact that my theta lived in AC minus, not just HH, because I needed to be closed. Because I only have one contraction appearing. The other one just disappears because the form is closed. And I know what the fiber of this is. There's a standard sequence involving HH, HC minus. So this is just HC1 minus D. This is HC minus 1 minus D. The fact that this commutes gives me a map here of complexes. These two are equivalences, so this one is an equivalence. So the complex underlying this Lie algebra is HC minus with a shift by 1 minus D. And its fiber is this. That one's abelian. So it's an extension of this by something abelian. This is the extension class. Okay. So that's HC minus. Where do I get HC from? So they're going to be special. Can you say again, with the algebra, you said it could throw some deformations in the category as a collabial category? Yeah, let me say that. So I told you about automorphisms. Let me just state what the corresponding deformation functor is. Okay. So it's a remark. At level of deformations, so this is up to the usual problems of your naive deformation functor not quite being a deformation functor and having to take a hole. Let me tell you what the naive thing is whose hole you take. Okay. So at the level at the level of deformations, the Lie bracket on H C minus C one minus D controls um, deformations of the pair. So of the form uh, of the pair C comma theta in the following sense. So what is such a thing? I have an A linear. So this is going to be an A linear DG category. On the central fiber, I have an identification with the original category. And, uh, sorry, that's a relative volume form. So this is like a family of varieties with a, a D form on the total space, which is non-degenerate along the fibers. And so I also require an identification of this volume form on the central fiber with the original volume form. So it's a deformation of the volume form. Okay. So it controls those kinds of deformations. It should be like family of smooth categories? Uh, it doesn't really matter. But the general is an open condition. Yeah, so I don't have to, I don't have to say that no. this is non-degenerate because it's a non-degeneracy is an open condition. So I could just, really, this is just some class in relative HC minus with this extra trivialization data on the central fiber. But you, you were saying there is an extra condition. Where is extra condition? Yeah, extra the data. data. Oh, that's the data. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So it's, this is the data. A, a, uh, an a-linear version of the data I started with, together with identifications on the central fiber with the original data. Okay. So, so now, can you ask about examples? So, like, if you take somehow a boundary Victorian variety, mm -hmm. that's a smooth Calabi-Yau category, and you can ask what it's like DB Koch on on the anti-canonical divisor, yeah. or uh -huh. um, and you can ask about its deformations as a category or as a Calabi-Yau category. That's right. You get more control of its. I mean, it's, um, is this sequence telling you something about the difference between those two things? Is that how I should understand this? Uh, 
So in this derived setting, taking stabilizers is not a subgroup, it's an extension. So I would say, um, I mean, suppose for, I mean, it's, it's telling you that if I took the trivial deformation of the category, but then wanted to deform the volume form, well, I just deform it. I just choose, you know, I just add on plus epsilon times something else. So there are two parts. There's one is deforming the category, the other is deforming the volume form. It can be that some deformations of the category do not admit deformations of the volume form? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, you could look at pi naught of this and see when it's surjective. So I think you know, that, I mean, that there happens must be geometrically examples. too, right? You can take a non compact coabial and deform it to something which is not a coabial. Yeah. Yeah, the point is I want to be able to exclude those examples from a an abstract mirror symmetry statement. I want to exclude those deformations. Yeah. Then I think you need to work with this deformation model. You need to put it in and say, I'm only going to look at these deformations. And, and, and so, 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 in particular, proving mirror symmetry of Calabial categories is almost stronger than just an abstract category because of this. Uh, right. You could ask for your equivalence to map one volume form to another. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now I want to describe the analog of this that's going to give HC instead of HC minus. Okay. So the HC is going to appear as a fiber of a map from this HC minus thing to something else. Um, you mean stabilizer, direct stabilizer? It's not going to be a stabilizer this time. Ah, it's, it's not be an action. Ah. It's going to be uh, like the fiber of a period map. Ah. Yeah, yeah this confused me for a little while. Let me say what it is. Okay, okay. Okay. So I can say it in terms of automorphisms, but it's a little more complicated, so let me say it in terms of deformations. So now, given a deformation of the pair, C comma theta in the sense above. So deformation C tilde theta tilde of the pair C theta as above. Uh, we can look at hmm, we can look at the variation. of the periodic cyclic homology class of theta tilde. So uh, I can take its class in HP of C tensor A, uh, but because of the connection, so where does that actually live? It's minus D, right? But because of the Gauss-Monic connection or Neal invariance of HP, I can pull the tensor of A on the outside. And uh, so I can compare this to the class of theta tensor A. Okay, so this is the constant class. Uh, so I get a map. What's that? Yeah, you're right. Sorry, one sub a. Here, I was going to call the corresponding thing theta. Okay. Okay. So, um, so there's a map, uh, a period map. period map from this Lie algebra of infinitesimal automorphisms of the pair to um, This is going to send uh, at the level of deformation functors, like I said.
between the class of the deformed volume form and the class of the constant volume form. And so the fiber is going to be those Calabial deformations with trivial period map, in which the HP class of the volume form is constant. It's against the position. <laughs> no, we'll, 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 it's, it's kernel. So this is an abelian Lie algebra. I consider HP as an abelian Lie algebra. Sub. I mean, it is actually, if you unwind it at some extra data, so it's still not quite a sub, uh, like a derived sub. Derived sub. No, it's not derived. Yeah. It's all derived. All right. Okay. Right. So. I don't know what to call it, but there's a, a short exact sequence of groups. So I have these infinitesimal morphisms of my pair. Uh, I missed a shift somewhere there. I'm a little confused. I want to say that this naturally maps to loops of HP with a minus case. And then via multiplication with U, this is going to be HP 1 minus D. And the fiber here, I don't know what to call it, so I'm just going to put a zero on it. Okay. So we get a short exact sequence of groups, and uh, then the theorem. So the proof here, um, part of the proof here, so at the level of Lie algebras, so at the level of complexes underlying the Lie algebras, we get the usual sequence. coming from the map from HC minus to HP with a shift. And its fiber is the thing we're looking for, which is cyclic chains shifted by 2 minus D. So that's how we get the Lie bracket on here, by identifying that complex with that underlying the Lie algebra controlling these kind of deformations with trivial period map. And if you want to prove the full theorem, you just have to figure out what these things map to in terms of deformations on the moduli space. So the HC minus will map to symplectic deformations of the moduli space. The Lie algebra controlling those is closed one forms. Uh, this will map to the Hamiltonian deformation which are the functions. Uh, so rather than giving more details about that, I have just a little time. I want to say something about, actually, I'm doing it backwards. So here are the motivating examples. Tony really wanted to hear some of the formalism, so I front-loaded that, and here are the motivating examples. So. Example one, which is probably closest to the theme of this conference. This is my only toy example of a Fukaya category that I understand. So this is local systems. And sigma, this is some closed oriented surface. Then, um, my good Willie Jones, they computed Hochschild and cyclic homology of this category. Uh, right, so this is what? Local systems on sigma. This is equivalent to. Uh, Equivariant chains, 
of the free loop space of sigma. So in particular, um, HC0 of local systems turns out to be the group algebra modulo commutators. And this thing has a so-called Goldman bracket. So these are linear combinations of free homotopy classes of loops. Goldman bracket. And we recover Goldman's theorem that this map that I wrote down uh, intertwines this bracket on the free loops with the Poisson bracket on the character variety. The uh, other example is the Hitchin system. So example two. How, how do you actually translate your so, so categorical construction into something in terms of paths? You, um, so this is, there's a topological construction of the string bracket. Um, th but if you look at how it's defined in terms of the S1 action and so on, and you look at these sequences, you see at least at the level of homology that the formula is the same. And in the string topology literature, I don't even sure there is a chain level formula. So all I'm asserting is that if you stare at this construction and work out what the bracket is at the level of homology, it, you get the exact same formula that's in Chas and Sullivan's paper. Uh, it's sort of the insight of Chas and Sullivan that this Goldman bracket, which is defined very concretely topologically, has an algebraic expression. So two, um, the category C is now say uh, Higgs sheaves. So I'm going to think of these as coherent sheaves on. T star C, so C here is say say uh, a smooth, uh, smooth proper curve. It's going to be interesting for genus greater than or equal to two. Okay. So these are Higgs complexes on C because T star C is affine over C. So to give an object here is to give an object on C together with an action of TC. Okay. That's an object on C. Uh, well, okay, I should be a little careful. I may not worry too much about who's big and small for the moment. Together with an action of the functions on T star C, but that's free commutative, so I just give an action of the generators. So there's my Higgs field. Okay. And then <coughs> this moduli space MC is some moduli of Higgs complexes. On exercise, using the Hochschild Poisson Rosenberg theorem, is to compute cyclic homology of this category. So it has um, some different components of different weights. Remember, I said in the geometric case. There are extra weights on cyclic and Hochschild and so on. So this is um, just uh, functions on T star C. There's nothing much interesting there. Uh, but the weight one part is actually uh, cochains with coefficients and a shift of 
omega 1. So you start from HC star. Uh, is it just corresponds to the gradient given by uh, relations? No. No, no, no. This, um, this, this just has to do with the fact that um, I'm in a commutative case. And so I, I have an extra grading on Hochschild chains by degree of differential form. And that's independent. That has nothing to do with the dilation on the fibers here. So what is it? What is what? What is star? He's asking about the star. The G star, star C? That's no, the no, the yeah, on the HC. Oh, that's the usual grading in cyclic chains. Yeah, so what is it on the Is that, is that grading? Yeah. Well, you have to put in minus sign to go from homology to cohomology, but whatever. Okay? So, anyway, this is the fun exercise, and inside of here, you'll find Hitchens Hamiltonians. You'll be looking at, so once I push down to C, this will split as a sum. Uh, shoot. Okay. Let me leave it at that. So you need to compute this as a sum of something involving contributions of symmetric powers of T. You apply Sir duality to this and you will find exactly Hitchens Hamiltonians. So let me stop there. Yeah, but there is some equation comes from geometric fibers. That that one does. It appears somewhere, but it's not the same as the okay. yeah. Yeah. And they will compute. Yeah. So you have to you have to compute that in this case the Lie bracket is trivial. Yeah. There's some geometric formula for this on a on a Calabi-Yau surface or a Calabi-Yau variety. Yeah. Round one of taking cross. Questions. More questions. Thank you.